Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and you know over the years we have done literally thousands of stories about all kinds of subjects all over this state. And the truth of the matter is, we never know until these programs actually air which ones are going to become your favorites, which ones are going to become overnight classics. For example, right here, we're in Highland Park right now, and back in the year 2000, we came here for the first time to do a program about this wonderful old family-owned and operated grocery store called Galco's. And like the sign says, Galco's has been a part of Los Angeles since 1897. It's been here in Highland Park since 1955. Now we came to Galco's that first time to do a story about the fact that they specialize in selling old soda pops. Soda pops that most of us drank as children and loved and thought had been discontinued but it ends up they were alive and well and being sold here at Galco's. We got a tremendous response from that story. So we figure it's time for an update, a soda pop update. So we have come back to Highland Park, we've come back to Galco's, and before we have the update, we're gonna go back in time. I was standing actually right here on this spot and take a look at that first visit back in the year 2000. Enjoy. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser. It's about 10 o'clock on a beautiful Thursday morning. And here we are in the community of Highland Park. We're standing right on the side of York Boulevard. And we're in front of Galco's Old World Grocery. Now, the reason we are here is because this young lady, Noelle Niece. That's right. Good morning. Good Shake morning. hands with nice me. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you wrote me a letter uh -huh. and invited us to come here to visit your family's grocery store. That's right. That's you right. You told us that there were some interesting, interesting, unique drinks and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, now don't give it away. Okay. Don't give I won't. it away because we want to build suspense in this thing. Okay, great. That the store had some fun things in there, historical things that you wanted us to see. Absolutely. Now we got here about five minutes ago. We've already been inside kind of nosing around a little bit. And Noelle, everything you said in your letter is true. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> All right, let's go in and share what's inside Galco's Old World Grocery with everybody who's watching. Come on in. <laughs> okay, we are inside the store, and the store does definitely have kind of an old-fashioned feeling oh, yeah, to it. Absolutely, it does. It really does. It's been here for 50 years, so. Can't All right, have any... now here are the here are the cast of characters over here. here How you know. doing? <laughs> I'm Huel. doing fine. Huell Hauser. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. John Neese. So this is your dad? Yes, this is my dad, and this is my grandfather. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Bill. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, tell yeah. me the history of this store, because I understand well, that... it's it's a uh, history that goes back 100 years. It's been a grocery family that long. We started out uncles and aunts and everybody got into the small type of business in the early days because when they came to Europe from Europe to here well they, they couldn't speak English mm -hmm. they couldn't find a job so they created a little grocery store and from that this from has that, grown yes that's true it's given me a living all my life I've been in the grocery business uh, I got to tell you this story, that when I was a boy, we used, my brother and I, we worked in the store. We did all the dirty work, clean up and everything. And then, the, you know where our bedroom was? Where? In the stock room, on, not with a mattress, but on top of melon crates. I could remember that. So you've had, the, you've got the grocery business in your blood. Oh yes, there's no way. 
Now, I'm sure he's got a million stories to oh, tell, and I'm sure oh. you've heard them all. I've heard every one of them. And your dad <laughs> still comes into work every day. Oh, yes, absolutely. He's here every day, rain, oh, shine, or whatever. Super, and he are you supervising the... him? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I don't oh. bother him. He That's does what he, what he wants. <laughs> I just do the paperwork. I got <laughs> a little bit of paperwork. Now you bring, when you come into work every day, you bring somebody else with you. Let's go meet the other okay. half of this. All right. Because this is my mother. your mom is my mom back here. Okay. Hello, how are you doing? Fine, just fine, thank you. And how look, you? Louis, she's back here making the sandwiches. Okay. Here. Now tell us what you do here every day. I do all the cooking, make blockbusters. I've been making them for the past 50 years. Blockbusters? Uh-huh. Now, so what's in a blockbuster? In a blockbuster, I have a nice French roll. Mm -hmm. I put uh, mustard mayonnaise mm -hmm. and put uh, provolone cheese pickles. Then I put my setups of salami, ham, mortadella, cooked salami, and uh, Oh my Much God. So you keep your mom working. Oh, absolutely. We keep her busy all the time. She needs to she needs to keep going. As a matter of fact, she stayed home for about a week and she told me, she says, you know, John, I gotta come back to work. Uh, this is driving me buddy <laughs> staying home. <laughs> now are you making those for us? Yes. And these are your yeah. world famous blockbusters. These are, these are the original blockbusters and it's got its name when uh, Rocky Marciano came into the to our business when we were downtown. My father, and he wanted a sandwich, and he wanted something fast, he had to get on the road. So he made him a sandwich, and he went to put it in his mouth, and he said, hey, this is a real blockbuster. <laughs> and it's been a blockbuster ever since. And you've been making them ever since. Yes, that's right. Oh, wow, look, Galco's mm -hmm. Blockbuster Sandwich. That's right. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're welcome. We've already met your husband. Look over there, Louie. There they are, right there. I think he spoils his granddaughter, doesn't he? Uh, he does. He loves her dearly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother, she said she's, she wasn't nervous a bit when, when she got married, but she's nervous, very yeah, nervous very, today. You're not nervous. I'm so shaky, it isn't even funny. <laughs> <laughs> By being on TV? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to eat one of those blockbusters. Okay, uh, sack them up for us. And you can have more. <laughs> okay, great. Nice to meet you. We never got your first name. Rose. Rose. Well, nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet your husband over here, <laughs> your parents. Yes. But now, as wonderful as this story is about the history of this store, you have brought us here to show us something that is unique, I think, to any store in Southern California. Well, that's true. It's probably the most unique thing, even across the country. I mean, I've gotten calls from people as far away as New, uh, Newport News, Virginia. And the story traveled all the way to Japan in the Tokyo Times. It's been all over. And uh, I mean, I just was very surprised at the, at the, reaction, at the reaction to what that. you've got what we have. right over there. In aisle three <laughs> and four. It's the aisle. A pop. <laughs> and here we are, aisle three, the aisle, aisle. of pop. <laughs> now, John, that needs a little bit of explanation, but Louie, if you pan over here, you can see very quickly what John's talking about. Tell us what you've got here, John. Um, I have about, right now, today, I have about 250 of uh, sodas. Most of them are old sodas that you can't find anywhere. Uh -huh. You realize what's happened in the grocery business, Coke and Pepsi buy the shelf space and they just take over the entire shelf and nobody else can sell their products. However, all of these products are still located somewhere within uh, the country. Mm -hmm. People remember Byerly's Orange. They're not made in the United States, but they're in Thailand. But wait a minute, so they're still making they're still all making. these old sodas that we old-timers grew up drinking. <laughs> well, you have to remember, once upon a time, there were 3,500 sodas within the United States. Really? And so I don't have them all, but I'm trying. <laughs> all right, let's start, because we'll just start right down here at the end. Here it is, Dad's Classic creamy orange the creamy orange now we also have the the lemon and the creamy red Look at but their most here. favorite one here in los angeles has been the uh the draft dad's classic draft root beer correct which i would think was this an eastern drink or did they have that out here as well no it was originally from uh chicago about 1933 i believe and it spread west and it was probably one of the best root beers 
of its time. Look at and this of course. Sun drop. Absolutely, from Tennessee. I knew you'd find I it. I grew <laughs> up, I grew up drinking sun drop 40 years ago. Turn it upside down, it still has the pulp in it. It's not like squirt where the pulp disappeared. Where do they make these things? Oh, well these are, are coming out of, a lot of these are coming out of the Carolinas. Wow. Because they still have a lot of glass in the area. I don't like, even know where to start now. Like, in, for example, in Tennessee, you won't find the glass, but you'll find it, the cans. Okay, Dr. Wells, that was originally, it's very similar to Dr. Pepper. It started in Los Angeles and went south. It became very soft, uh, very big in the south, in Mississippi, Dr. and Wells. that type of thing. And it's here's produced. one Orange Crush. Okay. You can't get any more American. <laughs> All American than a good old orange crush. Well, yes you can. We also have Dr. Pepper. This is the original formula, and it's only made by one packer in the United States, and that one comes from Texas. Dr. Pepper? Yes. And the, what do you mean, the original formula? Well, the formula has changed over the years. Today, it's more like a cola, and it's very high carbonation. This is much less carbonation. What is made with sugar. Now, Moxie, that's Moxie, the Moxie, look formula. at this one. Moxie Original Elixir. Since 1884, what is that? It's a brain. Uh, it was originally marketed as a brain and uh, nerve food. As a what? A brain and nerve food through a your brain local. and nerve food. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you what know, does this taste like? Well, we're going to have a chance to taste it. Yeah, we I are going to taste. You got a little tasting stand set yes, up. We're going to get to taste some of this stuff. <laughs> Look at this Indian. stuff. It just goes on and on. I don't know what we have. Cheer wine here. Uh, which is from the Carolinas. It was a local packer. It's an absolutely delicious cherry soda with a real burst of flavor. Look at now this. Now you have to remember cheer that all of these, wine. All of the, most of these old sodas are made from natural ingredients as opposed to essences which they use today in the modern sodas. And there's no such thing as a, a diet soda. No, these no. were just pure sugar and all kinds of other things. The, and here. by the way, most of them are made with sugar. I'd also like to point out the Delaware Punch mm -hmm. up in the top. I had a man in from uh, Newport News, Virginia last Saturday. Where is Delaware this Punch? is Delaware Punch right here. Now this one comes from Mexico City. It's no longer packed in the United States. He said, I want to see if this is as good as I remember. He opened the bottle, tasted it, and he says, it's as good as I remember. Wow. It is really, really a good one. Delaware Punch. Yes. Now that's owned by Coca-Cola, but they don't pack it in the United States. They try to put it in plastic, they try to put it in tin. And what happened is they had the problem stabilizing the flavor with it, and so it tasted terrible. It had a terrible aftertaste. So they're but making in glass, it in glass bottles in Mexico. In Mexico. in Mexico, yes. Now that brings up, we have some, you have customers coming in here. They hear about this and they come in looking for their old favorites, oh, Absolutely, right? absolutely, we have them. I mean, we have uh, egg creams from New York, mm -hmm. original packers from Brooklyn. We have the A.J. Stevens from Boston and their uh, raspberry lime Ricky. I, mean, I have, uh, I ha even have Frosty and a cherry limeade. Let's pull I have that green. one out. I have a cherry limeade. And we also have, oh look. We have Green River from Frosty Chicago. Frosty Cherry Limeade and original Green River from Chicago. So a lot of people, in other words, people from Chicago would know about Green River. Absolutely. People like me, originally <laughs> from Tennessee, would know about Sundrop. Yes. These were very regional yes. drinks. And, and things like this, like Verner's, the 1866, probably one of the oldest soda pops still made. Now this one, when you taste it, it tastes as good as it ever tasted. You buy it in cans, and it has a terrible taste. It doesn't taste the same. The people coming here, it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. And it's because of the bottles. what it's packed in. It's the, the bottles. Glass. It's the bottles. Now where are our customers? Ladies, come on around here. We've had them kind of been waiting back here. Come on up here. Here's a lady smiling from ear to ear because you found what? Knee-high peach soda pop. Knee-high, where is it? Peach soda pop. Right in a glass bottle. Yeah, now wait a minute. You brought this to show us the difference. Right. Here's knee-high peach in a plastic bottle. Right, I got this in Mississippi because I'm originally from Mississippi. And you can still get knee-high peach soda in Mississippi, but you can only get it in a plastic bottle or a can that does not taste the same. Really? When I grew up, we could get it in a glass bottle, and it tastes so much different in a glass bottle. It's like, it's like 
it just brought back so many fond memories to have it. I mean, I'm telling you, I go down south and I look hard for it. It's still hard to find. In Mississippi, you can't find it in a glass bottle easily. And you found it here in Highland Park. That's right. I found it right here locally. <laughs> and, and I'm going to be, I'm going to go, I'm just going to be shopping and shopping and shopping. Now, you can only drink so many of these things, you know. Oh, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> but see, I have an aunt that's going that wants some, too. Really? I've already told her about it. So yeah. is, this, is this normal for people to get turned on like this oh, when absolutely. they find this stuff? When you turn the corner, everybody smiles and walks down this aisle. Yeah. Yeah. Have you found anything else here that, uh, or you just you just zeroed right in on the knee-high peach? Well, I zeroed in on the knee-high knee peach, that's correct. But also I found, as I was looking down the aisle, I found some Verner's ginger ale. And I grew up in Michigan. And um, Verner's ginger ale in a glass bottle? Oh. Go I'm, I'm getting that, some of that, that today. Out. Go pull that out for us. Oh, here it is right here. And here's another lady. Come on over here and introduce yourself. I'm Mickey. And Mickey, what are you here looking for? Red Rock. Red Rock. Yes. Right here. And here it is. Tell us the story on Red Rock Golden Ginger Ale. Well, I grew up in Georgia, and this I just had this my whole life. This is a real bite to it. But even when we were little kids, we would just drink this and love the pain. And everything. It was great. <laughs> you get a lot of this too, don't you? Oh, do I have pain? <laughs> Here, I have one. Invite your enemies over. This is Blenheim's gold cap, a red cap, excuse me. I have this is their hot hot. Right now. You have this in okay. your refrigerator. You I like do. pain, don't you? It's just so good. It's so different and unique, and I don't think you can articulate what it's like. People really have to try it. It's, it's unlike any ginger ale you've ever had. Really? It really is. Now, are you a ginger ale person? Burners. Burners. That's what I grew up on, the original Burners. So I'm going to buy one of these today because I haven't seen this in a long time. And it tastes different in Michigan than it does in California, even in the can. Mm -hmm. It tastes totally different. I mean, it's, the, it's supposed to, you know, make your nose do some stuff. <laughs> Is this what these old drinks do? Yeah, I think. I think so. It's, uh, it's just fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Who would have ever thought there would be this much excitement about soft drinks that we all grew up drinking. I mean, it makes me speechless. I mean, I just came in here and I'm just all smiles. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm bringing lots of folks and I'm bringing my credit card and I'm just like... You I'm do gonna, take credit cards, yeah, don't you? I'm going to be credit stacking card up. <laughs> now, John, we have moved over to aisle 3A and we have found these are not the old drinks. No. These are new drinks. That's correct. The young people love these. If you go to most coffee shops, you'll be able to find some of these. For example, these are all sour sodas. The Kava Sutra. This is very interesting. Look at this. Pull that out. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Kava Sutra. And look at this one. Atomic Green Tangerine. Yes. So the kids have discovered. Oh, they love them. The brainalizers, the immortalizers, Look the electrolyzers. The... These are all maximum caffeine, maximum uh, guarana. Brainalizer, electrolyzer, rejuvenizer. <laughs> what in the world? Oh, and then we have down below. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Berry bomb, root beer riot. What do you got down on the and bottom? down below we have the brainwash. And these have caspium in them, so they're hot. They're what hot with chili peppers. It's a hot soda. People have been looking, oh, do you have any chili soda? Yes. These are the brainwash. Now, are these all safe? These don't have too much of anything in them, oh, do no. they, for no, the kids to be drinking them? They're safe, but I mean, I wouldn't make a daily habit of it. Yeah, because they really get you hyped up, they're, don't they? They're they full do. of caffeine. They're full yes. of... They're full of caffeine and full of guarana and full of... Full of what? Guarana, what which is, is a, it's a type of a caffeine that comes from South America. And we even have them in imports down here. For example, the bowels, this one right here, this is a guarana drink from uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Sol Real, which is another type of guarana drink. And these are popular in Brazil. So you got them from all over yes. the world. Yes, we do. I think I may have heard of Jolt you Cola. You've heard of Jolt. But Twice the caffeine. But you haven't heard of Outlaw uh, um, Butterscotch Hemp Soda. What in the world is that? It's a butterscotch flavored soda and it has hemp oil in it. And we have them in three flavors. Wow. And the women here are the Fanta 
orange drinks from Mexico. Yes, we have the fan of the sea. In the original there. bottles. In original bottles. We even have the Yoli, which is a lemon lime. That's the one you don't find too often up here. So you have people coming here literally from all over the world looking for the sodas yes. that they grew up with. Yes. We also have Africola. Africola right from Germany. Germany. This is a German African uh, Af excuse me, a German cola. And it's drier. Most of the European style sodas are drier than ours. And what are these? This now, looks these like almost like a beer bottle here. Well, these are Bundabergs. They come from Australia. Bundaberg. Yes. From Australia. Yes. And they have interesting flavors like peaches and pears and burgundy and a lemon lime bitters and then ginger beer. Yes. And then two up. Now this is a hop and herb soda. It tastes, it has a slight taste of like a lemon lime, but it's made from uh, hops, the same hops they use in beer. Really? But it's totally different. Totally yeah, but different. But all of these are non-alcoholic. They're all non-alcoholic. What is this cola champagne? Well, that's an interesting one. It comes from Central America, and if you notice, it says cola on it, and it's kind of a gold color. Look at this, Louis. This is beautiful. It's a cream soda. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's a cream soda. But it's called Cola Champagne. Yes. <laughs> wow. I don't know why, but I will. I'm, what are I'm these down out. here? Now, those are the Penafield brands from Mexico. Oh, okay. So and you've got a yes. lot of Mexican yes, drinks here. Do. But I would think that someone growing up in Mexico as a child probably drank the Fantas out of the bottle. There are not too many bottled Fantas around anymore, are no, there? They're, they're mainly in cans or plastic containers. That's true. It's very and hard What to is it about glass? that makes the drinks taste so much different. When you open the bottle and you taste it, you taste the flavor from the very first sip. It's not like when you drink from plastic. You drink from plastic, it takes you about five ounces into it to, before you realize what you're drinking. The first sniff you're gonna get is plastic. And it's kind of a dead taste. Yeah. And people don't realize that. They're just, you know, more is better. Well, it's not necessarily so. <laughs> well, let's put this one back We up. also have well, I guess this just goes on and okay, on. What else does. you got down here, John? Well, now we have the Italian ones, of course. Italian? Oh, yes. Those are 15% fruit juice. Most of the fruit is comes from Sicily. These are Southern called? A San Pellegrino. San it's the same, Pellegrino. Yes, it's the same one that does the water. The interesting one is the, uh, is the Quinota. Quinota? Yes. Now, it says, it says on there that it's a citrus-based drink. Mm -hmm. However, um, it does have a little quinine in it, and once upon a time, um, I was led to believe that it had artichoke in it. Artichoke? Oh, yes. Yes. So I don't these, know. These mixtures are really, a lot of them, old family recipes yes. from these little mom-and-pop companies. You said there were how many of them at one time? At one time, there were 3,500 different uh, soda manufacturers just in the United States. So a lot of these are old family recipes yes. from little localized sodas. That's true. That are still being used today? They're still being manufactured somewhere, and it's just a matter of finding them. How do you find them? Well, you know, it's very interesting, but once you get involved in it, it leads from one to another. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one of the early ones that I found was, was Dad's Root Beer. And from there I was able to find Delaware Punch. And oh yeah, well this is available and that's available. And like right now, I found Manhattan Special. It's just a matter of getting it out here. Yeah, getting it <laughs> so to the store. Getting it to the store. But I but imagine I once it. you get it to the store, word spreads fast. It does, very fast. Because people have come in and asked, for different brands, and it's a matter of tracking them down. For example, Schweppes Bitter Lemon is still being made in the United States, but there's only one packer, and he's in Pennsylvania. So it's, and then you have to find out, well, how much can I buy? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I? And that takes a little time. It's not something that's just in a month or two months or three months. It might take six, seven, it might take eight months, a year to do it, but I'll do it. <laughs> Now, I ran into Chuck, who was here taking pictures of us this morning. <laughs> Chuck, you're a regular here, and what do you buy when you come into the store? Normally, I buy the Dad's Old Fashioned Root Beer and Orange Crush and some of those things that you can't get anymore. That, well, you can get them. You can get them here. <laughs> and do they taste like they tasted? Ah, uh, yes, they, they do, yes. Got that same that authentic... Way, 
Long time ago. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Well, that's Beautiful. why people come here. <laughs> now, did you get some good pictures today? Yes, I did. He's been our paparazzi. And why were you specifically here to take a picture today? Well, the owner mentioned this to me a couple of weeks ago. So I we were going to be here. And I, I wanted to meet you, and I wanted to find out what Louie looks like. So <laughs> I've heard so much about him. And so you've been taking pictures of Louie all morning. That's right. <laughs> no, I was taking pictures of the young ladies. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and here they are over here. We got this whole thing set up. Come on over, Chuck. You can be a part of this. You've got this dad's root beer sign, the Moxie t-shirt, the original Coke, uh, you know, the old Coke uh, box here. And now we're going to get down to the fun part. So you're going to open up and drink the knee high. All right. You're going to open up and drink the bedrock. Do we have any? Uh, well, we got dads for you, Chuck. Wow. What do you want? Uh, I'm game. Anything's good. <laughs> How about the Stevens raspberry lime? Ricky? Stevens raspberry. Now we have to use a church key on these, don't we? And young people don't even know what a church key is, but that's what we used to have to open up soft drinks and beer with. Soft drinks, of course, is what I was always opening up with them. So we can open up with our church keys. I, I oh, was that a twist of off? Some of them are twists. Really? Like twist. I don't know. I don't oh, think. I don't know. That's uh, here. Some of them, though. Come on, and open them up. That I is a sacrilege. I don't even know how to use one of these. Are you kidding? Oh, come on. <laughs> you don't know how to use a church key? I'm teasing. <laughs> John, we're old. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And you've got me a bottle of this Blindheim ginger ale. Yes. The stuff that's going to knock my socks off when I open it up, right? I hope you don't choke. Here, let's <laughs> open it up. I with the red cap. You sure you want to do this? Well, I want to see what it's, I want to see what it's okay. like. All right, let's take a sip, everybody. Right. Here's Yay. to the old-fashioned way of doing things. Boy, mm. that's good though. Mmm. I've never had that before. It's turning red. No, it's it is. <laughs> it does have an aftertaste to it. Whoa, it's hot. <laughs> Woo! But look at her. Look at this lady. Now this, come in here, Louie, and get a shot of this. <laughs> this is a this is a picture. Put it right up beside your face. This is a. Is this a? <laughs> Is this an ad for knee high or what right here? Takes you back to your childhood. Oh, mm, you have no clue. <laughs> Takes you back. Oh, yeah, I haven't had this since I was little. It's great. Takes you back. Back to the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> and that is what a lot of people are looking for. Yes. It? Now we, you have to try yours. The, the sun, sun drop. drop. That takes me back to my good old days. And that's really kind of the joy and the wonder of what all of this is about, isn't That's it, true. John? Yes, it is. It, it brings you back and you have the original flavors and things when you were young. Yeah. And the party, your memories that come back when you drink them. Yeah. It's totally different than today. This is not commodity. This is flavor. We're yeah. talking flavor. Well, this is history. Yes. This is family. These are memories. That's right. These are things that you can almost literally touch and feel when yes. you when you put this bottle to your mouth and taste these old tastes that we've tasted so many times so many years ago mm -hmm. i'm tearing up just talking about it <laughs> actually i'm not tearing up talking about it i'm tearing up because of this <laughs> this stuff right here i gotta kill that taste with a with a sun drop mm. now there's a soft drink a sun drop from my young days in Tennessee. <laughs> we have had a wonderful time here. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Now, we might point out that these aren't cheap no, they because were. they're really made in limited numbers and you have to ship them to get them here. Yes, they're shipped cross country, most of them from the Carolinas, yeah. from Maine, from Texas, from different spots in the country. Mexico, from Washington, from, from Mexico over. City. Yes, they come from all over the country. But they're worth every penny of it. I, th I think so. I, I know they are to you. You've got a carload of Neha ready to take out of here. <laughs> and I'm loading up on the sun drop. And it has been a wonderful day here in Highland Park. This is a wonderful place to visit, to either retouch with your youth, with, with days uh, past, 
or to introduce yourself to some of these wonderful old flavors and new flavors that are coming out. That's true. Everything doesn't have to be big and mass produced. The little soft drink, some of, the, some of them very obscure, are still alive and well right here in Highland Park. We've had a wonderful day. Cheers. Cheers again. <laughs> here we go. Mm-mm. Nothing beats a sun drop. <laughs> Nothing. No. Nothing. Except me. <laughs> and now for the update. Time has passed. I'm standing here in front of Galco's with Noel, just like I did back in the year 2000. That's right. Galco's is still here. Noel is still here. But Noel, there have been some changes, haven't there? There have. There have. <laughs> Since uh, I think I saw you last, I've gotten married and I have identical twin sons. Two twin boys. Yeah. Can you guys stand up? Can you stand up? And they're wearing their little Galco's soda pop trainee shirts. Guys, can you say hi to the camera? Give away, wave. boys. Can you wave? <laughs> so we got little Galco's here. That's right. We've got the next generation of... Uh, Soda Pop Kings here. And so. do they come by? Come on in here, John, because John's still here too. Now you're a grandfather, John. Yes, I am. Have you already Hello. started putting the boys, the I twins, to work you. here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they help claim all of the boxes. <laughs> so you've already <laughs> got them working. Them. Oh, yeah, they take care of all the lower shelves. They probably <laughs> love coming down oh, here. Oh, they do. They, they climb on the pallets and they play, and it's just like a big, giant jungle gym in here. Well, you can't <laughs> start them too young in the Soda Pop business, can you, John? No. Nope, not at all. They're they're at the perfect age to begin. Well, yeah. thank you for showing up again. Yes, Does it seem like coming. it's been that long? It's unbelievable. Do you remember that day? Because I, I remember do. It like it I was do. Yesterday. Yeah, exactly. I can't believe that much time has passed, and it's just crazy. It's it's great though. Well, this is great. It's great to meet to meet the boys, and we are now going to go inside Galco's for a soda pop update and the boys are going to be with us all morning right yes they are they actually want to go inside and that's what uh dylan here is is talking about let's go inside let's go okay. inside come on grandpa <laughs> we're inside galco's and the place looks pretty much the same john yes it has the the uh, layout hasn't changed too much. We Except just, it seems to me like there used to be some food cases. Well, down there, here. there were, but those things have changed. Now we have, instead of 250 sodas, we now have 500 different so sodas. So you've expanded yes. from 250 to 500. 500 difference. different sodas. Yes, and we have things that no one else has. <laughs> All we right. actually go out and look for them, and if they don't find us, we find them. All right, now before we start looking at the new improved list of sodas that you have, and you also have added something else back in the back of the store that we're going to talk about that's very exciting, let's kind of get an update in the sense that here's the, the, the uh, sandwich counter. Yes. You still make the Blockbuster. We still make the Blockbuster, the one that was initiated by Rocky Marciano. Now Back your mom was here when we were here making the sandwiches for us and I was looking at the old film this morning before we came over here. She said she was so nervous oh, she about was, us being here with the camera. She said she was more nervous <laughs> with you than she was on the day she got married. <laughs> Well, now, since we were here in 2000, both your mom and your dad have passed away. That's true, yes. But you told me that your dad lived long enough to meet his grandson. He lived long enough, yes, to meet his grandchildren. He met them, and he looked over at them, and he looked at them, and he says, you know what, they sure are small. Yeah. i got to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, their spirit is still in this store. Oh, I know. They're still I mean, very much here. They put so much of their lives in this place. They were here every single day. I mean, every single day. Wow. They stayed here, and they, they worked every single yeah. day right to the very end. That's the way people used to be about their businesses, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, he just told me. He told me I was a damn fool for being in the grocery business. He said, you could make some, a lot more money working somewhere else. What do you want to do this for? 
And I said, well, you know, I like to be free. I want to be able to feel the, I want to be able to come in and listen to the motors run. I and mean, I want to be able to do this. And if I go to work for a big company, I'm going to be put in a little box yeah. somewhere and stuck on a shelf. And that's all I'm going to do. And I'm not going to be happy. I have to be happy with what I do. Well, their tradition and their love for this family grocery store has carried on with you. And right now is we're going to take a look. Okay. Well, here's the sandwich case right down here. So you still got the sandwiches going. We still have all the sandwiches going, yes. You don't have any food in this grocery no store anymore. No food. No more food. We're in the beverage. We're in the beverages and beer. 450 beers and 500 sodas. And that's what we're going to look at okay. right now, the new improved soda shop. Okay. And are the kids, did you, did I hear the kids back uh, here? I think they may be. Let's see. Hey, boys. Here. Oh, let's open the door. What are you all doing back here? <laughs> they like to hide behind the door, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah, they want to come out. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> and they'll lock it, too. <laughs> well, this takes the cake. You got something new here. Mr. Cucumber, does that mean that this tastes like cucumber? It tastes exactly like a cucumber. Now, this is new, right? This is brand new. You won't find it anywhere else. I made arrangements with the fellow from the fellow that's making this, and he comes from um, Romania, and these are his formulas, his Romanian formulas, and he made them exclusively for us. Where do you find them? these people? Well, how do they find you? Well, they they said I saw you on television, they're probably on your show, and you have to carry my sodas. So and there's a lot is. of new stuff being made too. These little small boutique, almost like micro breweries, for sodas. They that's come true. up with things like sodas that taste like cucumbers. Not only do they taste like cucumber, it is made from cucumber. Really? Does that mean sweet blossom is made from roses? It's made from the petals from rose petals. And Romania, Romania and Bulgaria are the capital of the, the rose capital of the world. And they actually press the petals, get the rose oil, and then make a soda from it. It is so light, so crisp, so clean. It's like, oh my goodness. This is crazy and right we're, And again, we're exclusive with it. And he, now these look the old. What is this? Dandelion and burdock. Well, if you're from what England. Is this bottle? Those are from England. They're actually brewed like a beer. They have natural carbonation. They're made the way sodas were originally made. Now, burdock is only used in two countries. It's used in Japan as a food, and it's used in England in drinks. Wow. And this happens to be a, a, quite a staple item. So anybody from England who sees it, their eyes get about that big. Over the years, you have become a soda pop aficionado, haven't you? Oh, okay. No, I mean, really, you <laughs> I, have learned so much. There yes. is so much to know about this. Well, that's true. Because where, where do we go next? Well, where do we, well like curiosity example, cola. Yes. The, the, the New York Times called that the best cola ever made. Again, it's brewed, but it has a little bit of ginger in it, and that's what sets it apart from all the other colas. Now, does this go way back? That goes, that's quite an old brand in England. Wow. It's rather new here. Now, I don't know where to, I mean, we you've got lots of root beers. Look at this, Root 66 root beer. Is that a new one or an That's old a one? new one. That's a new root beer. Some, a couple of guys got together and thought it'd be really like a play on words to have Root 66, so that's what they came up with. Here's the moxie. Here's the Moxie, the original elixir. That's true. Since 1884. That's true. It's the first soda to be put in a glass bottle and the only one to make it into dictionary. And didn't, yes, yeah, somebody's got Moxie. Well, that's where the term came from because it came in a six and a half ounce bottle and if you could drink two of them, you had a lot of Moxie. <laughs> Most people couldn't drink them. I mean, they were like, oh, what is this stuff? Can we really taste it? Are these using the original recipes? This bottler uses the original recipe. I mean, I, there's other bottlers that don't follow the original formula and they come out tasting like a watered down Pepsi Cola, whereas yeah. this one will actually change flavors if you sip it. You'll get a cola, root beer, cinnamon, vanilla, licorice, black cherry flavor. They're just everywhere. Well, I don't even know where to well, let me, start. Let me, um, perhaps you'd be interested in, um, in this one. This is the original formula Delaware Punch. We can't get Delaware Punch. Coca-Cola owns the name, but, the, uh, but they don't own the formula, and this little bottler found the formula, so we're able to do it under the Pennsylvania Punch label. Can these guys make money well, he's because a, they're really selling to a very small market, aren't that's they? That's very true. He's a niche, he's a niche market. Because yes. these sodas still can't get into the big 
grocery stores. No, There's not shelf space for them. Well, what happens is Coke and Pepsi buys all the shelf space and eliminates all the competition. So what we what happens is we wind up without any choices. The only choices we have is what Coke and Pepsi makes. Yeah. So these little guys, they can't get on the shelf. All right, let's walk. Okay. We're just we're just on one aisle. That's true. You've got four or five aisles here. That's true. When people come in, do they know what they're looking for? Some people know what they're looking for, and other people don't have any ideas, and they just start filling their basket. Mint julep. Oh, my goodness. That's made with real mint. It is absolutely the most crisp, most refreshing soda I have ever tasted. Is this a new one or an old No, one? this is very old. It comes out of Pittsburgh. As a matter of fact, the fellow that formulated this actually owned Tom Tucker Mint Ginger Ale, and he retired back in the 1970s, and, and after two months of being retired, he says, I can't take it anymore. I got to go back to work. So he came up with plantation-style mint julep, and it is so good. And where do they make this soda. Do they have little bottling plants using the old-timey equipment? Oh, this one is made with a pinpoint carbonator, and the pinpoint carbonator is, uh, is they don't, it's not a mechanical carbonator. It's, they actually use dry ice pellets, and as the pellets break down, it gives off CO2, which is very fine, so it comes out much like a champagne bubble. So I mean, they're I, making these the old-fashioned oh, way, yes, too. Oh, yes, absolutely the old-fashioned way. When you taste this, it's like Everybody tastes it and says, gee, this is really good, but I don't know what the difference is. Well, it's made with real mint. It's made with cane sugar. He uses a pinpoint carbonator. There's probably not four pinpoint carbonators in the United States. I would it's love to wonderful. visit one of these little bottling. Well, I Have can you arrange been that. To these? Have yes. you been to these people's? I've been, uh, I've been to their bottling plant. Now, back in 2000, we talked about Dr. Pepper because this is the original Dr. Pepper, not the Dr. Pepper that we know today. That is correct. This is made with imperial cane sugar and it comes from the very first bottler of Dr. Pepper back in, he's been there since 1891. And it doesn't have the same fizz, the carbonation that Dr. Pepper no, has it's, today. it's more like it has layers of flavor in it. And yeah. people taste it and they go, gee, this is really good. <laughs> here we go. We don't like Dr. Pepper. Look down here, this is the, now everybody knows Dr. Brown's. That was the very first cream soda ever made. Wow. Out of New York City back in 18, I believe it was 1869 or something. But so. they have diet they cream have diet. soda now, so they've updated it a little bit oh, for yes. those people who want to cut out all the sugar. Because I would imagine in those early days, we're talking about a lot of sugar. Where were the here. basic ingredients in those early soda pods? Well, most of them were real ingredients for flavors, and then they would use sugar for a sweetener and carbonated water, and that's about yeah. it. Pretty simple formula. Very simple. What have you got out here at okay. the very front to catch everybody's attention? You got the cucumber and the rose petals, mm -hmm. And then what is this Manhattan Special Orange Soda? Okay, now this comes from a little bottler in um, Brooklyn. They've been there since 1895. If you hold it up, you can take a look at the bottom and see all the pulp of the fruit in the bottom. Oh, yeah. They're a natural bottler. And you'd be surprised. People look at that and say, gee whiz, there's something floating in there. Is it okay to drink? They're a natural bottler. So they do use fruit. Their coffee soda is actually made from brewed coffee. They even roast their own coffee beans. Now that's the diet. The uh, regular one is right next to it. So is this coffee or is this soda? This is both coffee and soda. They actually brew the coffee and then they carbonate it. And it is delicious. And as a this matter of goes back how far? To 1895. This is their first soda in Brooklyn. As a matter of fact, the, the same family is still operating there. It's incredible. I mean, it's, it's really incredible. A lady came in, she said, oh yes, well we lived around the corner from Manhattan Special and my father would go over and get the spent coffee grounds and use them in the rose garden as fertilizer. Wow. And I'm going, oh my you goodness. You must hear amazing stories I from do. people who come in here. People come in and they, everybody, everybody, they just, they, they remember their, their childhood or their first soda or exactly where they were when they had that taste sensation. Yeah. And it's amazing to relate them back and forth, how, how, they, how they touch people and touch their hearts. Yeah, well, it was a part of all of our lives. That's true. And it's so wonderful to see them again. But as wonderful as these old soda pops and new soda pops are, yes. I want to go back to the back of the store now because you, you threw me a curve on this one. I didn't know you were doing this. This is really exciting. Walking back to the back of the store, look at, boy, you are, 
Loading up here. Yeah, Dr. Pepper, that's my, one of my favorites because I go for the cane sugar only. I like that. All right, so you got the original Dr. Pepper. Right. You got, what do you got there Well, in your I hand? just saw this, and this cracks me up. It's called Lennon Aid. It's a taste worth standing in line for. <laughs> <laughs> Lennon Aid. It says get hammered and sickle. I, I have never seen a, 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 a thing like that in my whole life. Is that this brand new? Is this no, something we've new? Had, we've had that for uh, I mean, several so years now. In fact, I originally sure. found the store when you had your first time you had him on. So. I dropped by. I never saw Lennon Aid. <laughs> wow! So you're coming back for the? I come back for my little. And it's like a kid in a candy store. Literally, you got all the candies. Oh, over there. the candy! That's a lead-in yeah. to the candy. Yeah. Nice to meet you, sir. Okay. Your name is Al Davis. A not, regular customer. Not the Al Davis. <laughs> the other Al Davis. Al Davis. Davis, the poor one. <laughs> all right. Now here's where we were heading. Cause boy, you got something going back here. How did you get into this? Oh well, that was my daughter. My daughter's idea, you know, she's responsible for a lot of what's, what's happened here. And she says, you know, Dad, you got all the old sodas, but you really ought to have old candies. I said, well, I can get them. I know where to get them. She said, well, then get them in. So we had the produce department set up, and we just filled so it with candy instead. You took out the produce and put in the candy. Right. We're going to come back here in a minute. We're going to start right over here because, boy, this... Now, talk about going back in time. Let's just walk our way through here. We've got, what is this? Abba's Abba's? Abba's Abba's. Yes, it's a, a, a chew with a peanut butter center. And, if you put, and when you're older, if you put them in the microwave for 15 seconds, it makes a big difference. <laughs> Where are some of the other really old ones here? Oh, well, the nut goodies, the Charleston chews. Well, wait a minute, here we go, the nut goodies, yeah, the those, original. That's, that's a Midwestern um, thing that came out of Minnesota. The buns came out of Ohio. The... What is that? Pearson's Milk Chocolate Bun. Yes. The Charleston Chew. Okay. What's that? Well, it's a chew with covered with chocolate. They could either be either be uh, chocolate, vanilla, or uh, or strawberry, and they have a chocolate covering on them. Idaho Spud. Spud. Out of Idaho, from the Idaho Candy Company. So people from Idaho would come in here and just go right to this. Oh, they, they look at it and he said, I've been looking for those since I don't know when and I can't find them anywhere. Now, I'm sure that when we go down here, people are going to recognize their they own will. favorites. We got Sky Bar. That came out of New England and there's like four or five different flavors in every bar. Cup of Gold, Rocky Road. Well, Nestle's Chunky's been around. Yeah. Twing, twin mm. Bing. Twin Bing's from uh, Iowa City, Iowa. Tootsie Roll. Yeah. Clark. Now, what's the deal on Clark bars? Clark bars originally came out of Pittsburgh, and the fellow was very patriotic. And during the First War, First World War, he made the candy bars and gave them to every soldier in the European theater. He just gave them to them to make sure they'd have something to remind them of home. Now, so are any of these available in regular? Some of these are available in regular stores. Some of them are. Most wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse uh -oh. me for interrupting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Goo Goo's. Goo Goo Clusters. From Nashville, Tennessee. That's I true. grew up eating Goo Goo's. You know how they got its name, don't you? I can't remember the story. Well, he had a, a new little baby, and the baby went Goo Goo. <laughs> And that's how he, uh, they got the name, Goo Goo Clusters. Boy, was these trying to find the are amazing. They're <laughs> round, they're full of peanuts, and they're still made in Nashville. Yes, they have the peanuts. This one is the Supreme, and this one is made with cashews. And I think this one is even better. What, the and Supreme? The Supreme, yeah. Oh, and it's pecans. I'm sorry. Pecans, not it's peanuts. It's pecans. One. Pecans. Excuse me. <laughs> pecans. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Nickel nips. Yes. As a matter of fact, when these came on the market, they were a nickel apiece, and they were a much larger wax bottle filled with liquid. Wait a minute. These are the ones that you bit off the top. Yes. It was like made of paraffin or something. Yes. And, and the, then the liquid was inside. That's right. They still make these? They still make these, and now they come in a little, what, five-pack, I believe. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. And look at these. Now, I'm not familiar with bull's eyes or cow tails. Well, originally those came out of San Francisco and they were part of the Goat's Candy Company. And they're actually caramels. And that one has like a cream center. What about Flicks? That was very old. That came from Ciridelli originally. And in they San have, Francisco? In San Francisco. They were, they've been, and that was the favorite of every kid at the matinee because they'd shake them and make noise. <laughs> oh, wow. They're chocolate drops. Now, 
uh, Jerry Alley stopped making them about 30 years ago. So who makes them now? Well, it just so happened they came back on the market about a year ago and I'm looking and I called the people up and I said, but they don't make these anymore. How did you make them? Well, my, my boss bought the recipe and the name and, but they don't have any equipment to make them. Well, he kind of made his own equipment. Wow. And that's what the lady told me. So a lot of these candy bars were, were popular, stopped making them completely, and then somebody bought the recipes and came back with Because that was his favorite candy. She wow. told me that. She said, Flicks were my boss's favorite candy. What are these? Okay, well, these are Walnettos and Mary Janes. And they're, this one is, a, they're both kind of caramel chews, but the Walnetto is actually a walnut flavored one. And the other one's a plain caramel. Do you get people reacting? Oh, look at this original double <laughs> bubble gum box. Boy, that just the box, original 1928 flavor. Just the box That's true. takes you back. It sure does. Do you get the same kind of reaction to the candy that you're getting to the soda pops? Oh yes, everybody, they just love the idea of being able to have something from their childhood and those childhood memories. And it just makes it very special for everybody. They, everybody smiles. I you know, we have a happy a, business. I haven't seen a <laughs> box like this of Double Bubble in 40 years. That's true. 50 years, this is crazy. <laughs> wow, and here are the dots. The dots and the crows. And the crows? Now, I have to be honest. You know, I am not a licorice person, but I can tell you those are absolutely delicious. Yeah. Really, really good. Here is a guy who has loaded up. <laughs> what are you doing? Having a party at your house? Nope, just uh, taking care of the kids. Wow. Yeah. Oh, boy, your kids <laughs> must love you. I hope so. Look at yeah. this. You've got the <clears throat> soft drinks, but you've got the candy. Oh, you got the cow tails. The Big Hunk, Big the hunk. Rocky Road, yep. you're getting, oh, you're drinking the rose We tried petals. the cucumber last time, it was really good, and so getting the rose petals for my daughter. You're getting the dad's root beer? Getting dad's root beer, it's great taste, my, my, my son's girlfriend loves it, so now, we're getting it for her. Now, do you have to parcel this out so that they don't consume it all right away, because... You know, I, I don't. I actually just stick it back, <clears throat> pardon me, in the extra fridge in the garage, and then they go for it, and I was here last week, and it's just about all gone. So wait a minute, you use, you go, your family goes through this much stuff in a week? Well, look at this. I, I got to be honest with you, believe it or not, I'm getting half this from my dentist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, your dentist, boy, that's not very good uh, for the dentist to be eating all of this stuff. Well, not the candy, but the soda. It's funny, what I got for him last time was the Pennsylvania Punch, uh -huh. because he asked me to pick him up some Delaware Punch if I could find it, and John told me the Pennsylvania Punch was is the original Delaware Punch. Yeah. So he tried it, John, and he said it tastes just like it. Do you find that the people in your family who enjoy this the most are people who had it before when they were kids? Or are the kids, today's kids, who have never tasted anything like this, enjoying it just as much? I think the kids today are enjoying it just as much because they didn't grow up with this kind of stuff. And for them to be able to enjoy soda in the glass bottles, the original stuff, things that you have to actually open up with a bottle opener and stuff, they, they're just enjoying the heck out of it. Yeah, yep. plus, you know what? It probably tastes better, It too. does, it does. I, you know, for me, soda out of the bottles always tasted better, and they're finding the same thing to be true. And it's not all over carbon. It's no. got real ingredients in it. It's not just all fizz. Exactly. Yeah. The the soda back then it just seems like the flavors are so much better. The the original Dr Pepper compared to today's is yeah. so much better, and it's just so much more natural. Every one of these seem to have some kind of a story behind them. They're they not just sodas. They're sodas with history. They're even the new sodas are sodas with dreams of people who are, are going into business and wanting to come up with something new and different for people to consume. So there's kind of an ongoing soda story. Here. That's true. There, it, people are always looking for something new. And I think that that's really important to young people today. Early on, it was grandparents bringing their grandchildren. And now it's young people bringing their parents. And what I'm beginning to notice is that they're actually looking for freedom of choice that they don't have. You go into a supermarket and you have two choices and yeah. that's it and t when they come in here and they just look and smile and say you mean I can try this and I can buy 
one bottle. I don't have to buy an 18 pack or a 24 pack mm -hmm. and I don't have to have a 64 ounce. Yeah. I don't have to do that. I can do all these different things. Yeah. Sure, take one bottle of whatever you like. That's great. It's, it's more fun that way. You are making people happy, aren't you? <laughs> yes, we're making a lot of people happy. And, when, and I'm happy doing it too because it's, it's fun. And I have a chance to talk to people and I try to talk to everybody that comes in. Yeah. Yeah. And share the story. And share the story, yes. Oh boy, they're drinking the soda pop. Boys, you gotta take the top off first. Oh boy, look at that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, you have got them trained, I haven't know, you? I know, I'm telling you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good you job. know, this has been such a wonderful, you know, this started in 2000 uh, as a story about Six, soda pop. I think it was 98. Mm. Was it 98? Yes. <laughs> I think it was 2000. And we've got the pictures up there. We'll have to go it look. It was a long time ago. It was, ago. Time ago. <laughs> it was, it was pre-twins. Yeah, pre-pre-twins. And it started out as a story about soda pop. It's, it's ended up being a real family story because I come by all the time. This isn't the first time I've been back in all yeah, those right. years. Yeah. And to see the way the family has grown and changed yeah. and evolved, new generations coming on. It's just, it's just been a wonderful experience for me, and I think it has been for our viewers as well. Thank you so much for that thank first you. Oh, invitation you, you, you sent coming. me all those it's years ago. She you. started it all. Yes, she did. And thank you, John. And thank you. And thank you, boys. Thank You're doing you. a good job. I think they're going to be marketing majors because they're so. they would they're going to run the store. Well, they are going to run the store. That's true. Someday. You don't. I don't know whether I'll be the one coming back for the update when they're running the store. But I I, I see soda pop in their futures. All right. And I highly recommend this place. This wonderful family. Soda Pop store here in Highland Park. You got to come by and take a look for yourselves, a taste for yourselves on what this place is all about. Wave goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. We've had a wonderful bye. time bye. here at bye. Galco's. <laughs> Bubble up. Now, this is an old one. It's about 1921. Old Rock Candy Mountain. They talk about Bubble Up Springs, and what they were talking about is the soda pop. Is this an LA? Soda pop? It, it came out of Los Angeles. It was taken, a fellow bought it, took it back to Illinois, and then the Barbie family from Coca-Cola, who owned Coca-Cola of Los Angeles, brought it back in 1955, wow. where it became Kiss of Lemon, Kiss of Lime, bigger than king size. You know all of this history. Oh, this yes. is, I'm looking over your shoulder. There is a Coke. We have here. A Coke. You sell Cokes here. I thought Cokes were the bad guys. Oh, no. The big well, bad guys. Well, these are coming out of Mexico, and they're made with cane sugar, and that's totally different than the Coca-Cola made in the United States that's made with corn syrup. Now, once a year, at Passover time, they do kosher Coke, and if you find the two liters, make sure you get one and try it against the regular two liter, and you will taste the difference in the two Coca-Colas. A kosher Coke. What makes a Coke kosher? It, ha it cannot be made from spouted grains during Passover, so it's made with cane sugar. And when you taste that, it's totally different than the Coke that we get the rest of the year that's made with corn syrup. Can you get a lot of, of Cokes from Mexico in Los Angeles? Yes, I would you think can. you could. Yes. Yes, they're, they're very available now. Yeah. In but, glass bottles. In glass bottles, yes.